So I just got, went and picked up a 1949 Westinghouse tabletop model from a guy from the Vintage Television Collector Group. He was just wanting it to go to a good home. He wasn't looking for any money for it. So I reached out and said I'd like to restore it, give it a good home, and see what we can make of it. He said his, uh, his friend's grandmother bought it new in 1949, and then he got it in the 70s, I believe. Um, I should have asked him when was the last time he turned it on. It's pretty dusty in there, but that's expected. And gosh, it just looks great. So I'm going to do a diagnosis of it. Sort of just look in it, see what we got going on, test the tube, and go from there. So here it is. This is a Westinghouse 1949 H223 little tabletop television. And it is in really good condition. You can see the finish on the veneer. It's cracking a little bit. I don't know if this is a veneer actually. Not yet. Uh, but we'll open it, test the tube, get it cleaned up, and we'll go from there. I just I just took off the back and everything looks to be alright. Tubes look to be all be there. Looks like there's, I guess the finish on the tube is starting to chip away. I forget what the, what that material is called. So it looks like there has been some repair to it. I guess this was in the 50s or 60s because the guy said he hadn't turned it on since the 70s. So I doubt he had work done to it. This thing is so dusty in here. All right, I'm gonna try to air, air, put some air on this to get some of this dust off. And then we can test the tube. All right, I'm testing the, the tube right now. Let me see if you can, I can't really see if there's a light in there, but I can see sort of a reflection of a light. Oh yeah, I see it now, yep. Got the filaments lighting up in there. Warming up after being off for 40 years. So I'm just letting it chill at 6.3 volts. This is a bit, uh, 10 BP4. Oh, there it is. So I'm letting it warm up a little bit. And then I'm gonna check for shorts. See if it's, if tube has a short in it. I think we can go ahead, it's been on for maybe five minutes. Go ahead and check for shorts. No shorts. Wow, that's great news. And then if it's good, we can continue. So shorts. No shorts. The mission. Oh no. Oh well. Oh, it's coming up. Uh, it's climbing. It's still getting voltage. I mean, it is. It's still climbing. So the G1 range, so what I do here is, so the, di the 10 BP4, so the G1 is eight, G1 volts is 18 to 58. So when I go to, we're gonna go ahead and switch it to cutoff. And then Gotta get it so the cutoff is right 
over its needle. Okay, so 10 BP4, G1 volts, 18 to 58. Now, we are right at around 21 G volt, G1 volts. So the tube is good. The cutoff is, well, actually we can go up a tiny bit more. Okay, well, right there. So we're about 22 G1 volts. So we are within range. So I took it out of the case now. Um, this thing is pretty dirty. I don't think it's ever been taken out of its case. Um, so I forget what this stuff is called, but it's been flaking off the bottom. I vacuumed some of this dust out uh, yesterday but I'm gonna go ahead and continue to clean it all and get it nice and nice and dust free. All right, I cleaned the chassis, I cleaned the tube itself. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Looks good on the inside. There's a lot of old capacitors in there. Um, looks like it has had work done on it. There was a Sprague polypropylene capacitor under there and I'm not sure when those capacitors came out but definitely wasn't in the 50s or 40s so this has had some work done on it under here there is a little screen that I can unscrew and take off so I can easily access the chassis so I don't think I need to take it out anymore um, take the whole chassis out of it there are a couple capacitors underneath the um, the flyback uh, cage over on this side. Um, <clears throat> so I might have to take out the the flyback cage um, and see if I can get to those capacitors there. If I can't access it from under, which would be annoying. Finally got back around to working on this 1949 Westinghouse. I went ahead and replaced all the electrolytics. A lot of them were uh, actually leaking um, and shorted out. Um, I, so I, I replaced most of the 0.1 microfarad capacitors. Um, replaced a lot of the others. I mean, I did a a lot of work to this for the past five or so hours. Damn, five hours, all right. So yeah, I still have some capacitors to replace, but I'm gonna try to turn it on and see how that goes. I always get nervous when powering up a, a set because I, I don't know what's gonna happen, but all the, electro, all the electrolytics are good. Um, so, I mean, it, we should at least get something. I'm going to get ready to kill the power if anything happens. Milo, get out of there. I hear high voltage. Oh. There's something. Oh, something's happening. Looks like I'm getting... Getting off. I'm getting a line there, so I'm gonna turn it on the brightness. Oh. Ooh. Alright, I'm gonna kill it. Alright, so I replaced the Flyboy 3, whatever it was. 
Uh, I tried to look for a separate uh, vertical output tube, but I don't think I have a replacement. So I'm gonna see if what happens if the rectifier tube is good. Hopefully that's that will solve the problem. Your high voltage. All right, I got. You can see that, right? Okay, I got vertical output or vertical failure. I turn that brightness down a tad. Oh, am I getting... Turn it bright. So, so scratching this from the speaker. getting some noise from the speaker. Okay, wow, actually, pretty bright picture. So if you can see that, I don't wanna stay up there too long. All right, um, nothing on here, but that's all right. Um, so these broken horizontal knobs don't do anything. Let's see how everything's looking back here. smell just a lot of dust burning off. All right, I forgot to get this on recording, but what you're seeing on the screen right now is an excessive, what looks like an excessive horizontal scan. So if you look closely, I'm gonna put this clip on repeat. If you look closely, you see the raster going from the left to the right, but it goes to the left and then, or it goes to the right, back toward the left and then back right again. So that vertical line is from the raster going there twice. So I've been posting on antique radio forums and I think we've narrowed it down to something going on with the damper circuit. So I have tried a different tube, a different damper tube, and the same result happened. So there was a, there's a, there was a sand resistor here connected to these. So it was a sand resistor here connected to this resistor strip. Now this resistor um, is measured on the schematic for 1500. And that it was measuring around 8500 which is what this resistor is here as well the resistor here is 8500 when it should be 7500 not that much of a difference but I got a replacement on the way this resistor strip so from these two points together it's measuring around let's see what it's it was measuring around 900 ohms right here when it should be 650 so it's not too off these two points together was a different story the it was that my meter couldn't land on a specific measurement it was going all over the place so this is a problem 
Uh, it's supposed to be at 1300 ohms, both 10 watt resistors. So those are arriving today, which I'm very excited about. So I can hopefully hook those up and hopefully the image will look clear, but I've replaced um, all the paper caps, all the electrolytics. So I'm very close to this set uh, being complete, which I'm happy about. So um, <clears throat> next step is just get those resistors in there. This strip is, these are notorious for going bad and it did go bad. Um, so yeah, I'll post an update uh, soon. Here it is. Finished, put back together. The case could use a little work, but I'm not too worried about it. I think it looks really nice for being this old. Might get it done one day, but I'm happy with this. Here's my other set, <clears throat> 1954 RCA Victor, 21 inch CRT tube. This is just a Macy's set that you would get at Macy's back in what's like the 70s. There are no tubes in it, it's all solid state. Tube tester from a drugstore back in the day. Westinghouse. Uh, Zenith. Little tabletop. I am. This is going to be the next one I restore. Down here, Grundig 59. Really pretty, really gorgeous. This television is probably the best condition I have. Philco Predicta. Uh, debutante. I have another one at my office and Philco Predict a Pedestal. This is probably be the last television I restore. I'm just not looking forward to restoring it at all because of how awful Philco's accessibility is. CF. So yeah, Y'all want to see more restorations in the future, if I should be more detailed and then less detailed, uh, let me know. I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, I'm still learning every day. I've only been doing this for a year. Um, so yeah, just let me know.